Hey guys, what is up? My name is Jimmy and welcome to my new video. So in this tutorial, what I'll be doing is going over these four futuristic photos that I did here. Now these will be two tutorials in total. The first one will be covering these first three images that you see here. And the second one will be covering this photo here. Now the reason I'm only doing two tutorials is because these first three that I'm doing in this tutorial are all pretty much the exact same techniques, just used in different ways. Uh, so more specifically, as you can see in Photoshop, I am doing all of my work on this one in this tutorial. Uh, and then it's up to you to kind of take the techniques and ideas away from this and use it in your own work. Uh, so this tutorial will not be an exact step-by-step -step tutorial, me showing you exactly everything I did. And there is a few reasons for that. Uh, the first one being, I didn't actually create this in Photoshop. I created this in Adobe After Effects CS5 or CS6. And the reason for that is, if you've been subscribed to me for a while on YouTube, you'd know that I used to be into visual effects and stuff like that. Uh, so I can really create these kind of futuristic effects a lot quicker and a lot easier and a lot better using After Effects and all the camera controls in that. Uh, now, some of you might be better at Photoshop, and in that case, you won't have that problem. Uh, but for me personally, I'm more comfortable doing that stuff in After Effects, and that is one of the reasons that my final outcome today will not look as good as the final outcome that you guys have seen. Uh, another reason is because it would take way too long. This tutorial will probably be about 10 to 15 minutes as it is, and if I was to show you exactly step by step, it would probably be about half an hour since there is a lot of kind of small details and a lot of things like that uh, that I would have to take into account. Uh, one last thing, I hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a fantastic day and I uh, hope everyone stayed safe and had a good time. So let's get right into it before we delay it anymore. So you can see here in Photoshop, I've got my photo already opened up. This is the Lightroom processed one and this is the raw file here. So just some basic lighting enhancements and uh, contrast and clarity and stuff like that. Nothing too big. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new layer and rename this to lighting. Now if you noticed in the final example, there's just a really big burst of light coming from the corner window here. And all I did for that was grab our brush tool, make it white, make the size nice and big and the hardness 0%. And then just simply click in the corner once and you can see it pretty much does that. You can also create multiple layers and create a hotspot and everything like that. But that is the most basic way to do it. Okay, so what I want to do now is create a new layer and rename this one hologram board. Now this is where we're actually going to start creating the board that uh, he's holding within the picture. And it's not too hard. So to do this, we want to select our rounded rectangle tool, which is down here. We want to go up to our radius slider up here and change that to about 50 pixels, which will give us a nice rounded edge. Uh, so we want to go to our fill up here, change it to white, and then click and drag to about the size we want it. So there is looking pretty good for me. So now that we've done that, what we want to go ahead and do is right click and go rasterize, right click again and go blending options. Now from there, we want to enable color overlay and select the color that we want for our board. So in my case, it's going to be this nice light blue here. And then we can bring down the opacity and it's looking pretty good right there. Um, so from there, what we want to do is actually go to stroke, enable that, and bring that up to about 25 pixels. Depending on how big it is, uh, you will have to alter these settings. And then I'm going to choose a darker shade of the primary color that we use for our board. So if we're using green, you can use a darker green. And the reason we're doing this is just to kind of separate the board from the background. We don't want to make it look like just a floating board of light. We want it to kind of have a border, make it look like it's kind of solid and it's actually there. And this is a decent way to actually do that. Uh, so from there, we're going to click OK and then bring down our fill slider here. Now, the reason we're changing fill and not opacity is because opacity, if we lower that, you can see it actually uh, changes the opacity of the stroke effect as well and not just the inside here. So if we bring that down and then bring down our opacity a little bit, uh, you can see it looks a lot better like that. OK, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and create a new layer again and call this one menu bar. Now what this is going to be is the part on top where it says all of our tabs and the names and stuff like that. So it is the exact same effect again, so grabbing our rounded rectangle tool. But this time we're going to bring down our radius to something like 25. Make sure we're on our menu bar layer. Click and drag across like so. Uh, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and hold control and line it up. 
and that's looking pretty good right there. So now we can right click and go rasterize layer and then right click again blending options and color overlay. Now I am aware that you can set the color as you're creating the layer or the shape however I prefer to do it in blending options because that way you can alter it at any time it's a lot quicker for me. Uh, do it whichever way is simpler for you. So I'm going to make this nice dark blue here and then fade it out like so. Um, so the colors aren't looking as good in this one, but you get the idea. Play around with it a bit and you will get better colors than me. So we're going to grab our text tool by pressing T or clicking down here and typing in the words that we want along here. So for me, it will be home, do five spaces or something, gallery. Now, of course, you can do these on separate layers. I'm just doing it all on one because I find it a little bit easier again. And from there we can bring up our character options down here and just change that to white and go to our blending options on our text layer and change this to overlay. Now as we bring down our opacity you can see it kind of gives it that see through glowing futuristic uh, kind of look there and it's looking pretty good. So from there we can just press control T or bring down that and bring down the size a little bit like so. Or we can simply just bring down the character size, however, again, I just do it whichever way is faster for me. Uh, that's looking pretty good right there. And one last thing I did on this menu board was I kind of had the bright slits in between just to separate the words. Now there's two ways that you can do this. The first way would be going back down to your menu bar layer here, grabbing just your rectangular marquee tool, and simply drawing a shape, lining it up roughly in the middle, and pressing the delete key and then moving along again while holding shift and if you press it again you can see that is cutting out slits in those areas uh, one other way you can do it is actually do it on an entirely separate layer above that and just kind of make it the same color as your text and then line them up that way uh, whichever way is easier for you uh, I would recommend doing it on a separate layer not like I just did and the reason for that is you have um, much more control over it and you can change it much easier at a later point Okay, so once we've done that, there is one more thing that we have to do to this hologram board, and that is import a photo. Now for me, I am using my photo here, Clear Vision. Uh, if you like this, you can see the full quality on my DeviantArt with the link in the description. And kind of just drag it to where you want it and resize it to however big you want it, uh, which there seems fine for me. And then from there, I'm going to bring down our opacity into a happy. So there, right click, rasterize, right click, blending options and we're going to add a stroke to it uh, so from there I'm just going to bring up the size a little bit and that's going to give it those nice rounded corners and I'm going to select kind of this dark gray color here just to again separate it from the hologram board okay so once we've done that we can go ahead and grab our text tool one last time and just type in clear vision uh, by the way the font I'm using is century gothic uh, since people always ask about that and that's looking pretty good right there so now that we've done that we want to rasterize our text layers and you'll have to do that for the next step so make sure your text says everything you want it to the exact font and everything like that because after you rasterize it uh, you won't be able to kind of edit it it becomes a single layer uh, so once we've done that we can select all of our layers that are on our hologram board make sure that you don't need to add anything else and then click this little arrow up here and go new group from layers and I'm just going to call this hologram board okay so now that we've done that we can go ahead and start actually moving it into position uh, so as I said at the start of the tutorial I actually did this in Adobe After Effects so mine probably won't look very good uh, but bear with me and spend a bit of time on it and I'm sure you will uh, get yours looking fairly decent so we want to press Control T or go edit and free transform and this box will pop up then we want to right click and start off with perspective. So now what we want to do with this is kind of click the bottom corner here and just drag it upwards and that's going to kind of tilt it uh, closer so this side looks a bit closer to the camera. And then we want to right click and go distort and just kind of bring that side in a little bit. Bring this side out so it looks like it's tilting a little bit. Might bring this one out just a little bit more. And that's looking fairly decent right there. Now obviously this actually isn't looking decent and it's kind of looking rubbish uh, but spend a bit of time on it as I said I don't want to sit here for five minutes perfecting this in a tutorial 
when it's just going to bore you guys and waste everyone's time. Uh, so let's just say that is the final position that I wanted in. Might just rotate it around very slightly. And there we go. Uh, so now that we've done that, what we want to do is make it look like it's behind his hands and make it actually look like he's holding it. Uh, so to do this, we're just going to turn off our hologram board layer here and go to our retouch layer. Now we're just going to duplicate this by pressing Control J again, then drag it to the very top and rename this one hands. Now we want to grab our brush tool. Now there's a few ways that you can cut his hands out here. You can either use the pen tool, the lasso tool, uh, the magic wand tool I guess could work. Uh, but for me, I'm just going to use the quick mask option down here. So I'm going to click that, make sure we've got our black brush selected and our brush tool, and just kind of paint in here. Now the more accurate you are, the better. And obviously we don't need to paint it onto his hands here because we want the board over those. Uh, so just around his thumb here, uh, I'm going to go up here, and I might just um, cut this and start playing it again uh, after I've finished painting over everything I want to, just so you guys don't have to sit through it, and uh, everyone should be happier. Okay, so as you can see, we've just finished painting over everything that we want above our board, uh, so just quickly go over this a little bit neater. And once we unclick this here, you can see it creates a selection. So from there, we can just press the delete key and it will remove everything around it. And just so you see what it looks like, if we alt click on our hands layer, you can see we've got his face here, we've got his hands and everything like that all cut out. Uh, so you can see there is a little bit of separation here. Now the reason for that is because of this lighting layer. Uh, it's only selecting the bottom part of the photo and not the hands since it's below it. So all we need to do is click and drag that up and everything looks fine now. So now if we enable our hologram board uh, folder again, you can see uh, it's kind of looking like he's holding it. And uh, now there is a few small errors. You can see there's a little bit of, you know, bad cutting out here and in a few other spots and it's not going through his hand here. So to fix that, we're just going to go to our hands layer, create a mask by clicking down there or just using the eraser tool and just kind of paint that section out. So that's looking pretty good right there. We can just clean this up a little bit. And uh, there we go. Uh, so that's looking pretty good right there. It kind of looks like he's holding it. We need it to go there as well. Um, and that is pretty much it for this tutorial. So there is the basic effect. If we take a look at the final you can see there is a bit more kind of adjustments, there's a bit more lighting adjustments, a bit more curves adjustments and sharpening and a few more things on the board. But the general idea is there and I showed you exactly how to do everything that you will need to do to take it one step further, add a few more things in and make it look a little bit better. Uh, so thank you very much for watching you guys, I hope this tutorial helped you. I hope it answered all of your questions, if it didn't feel free to send me a message on YouTube or leave a comment down below. Also feel free to suggest any more tutorials for me and you can go ahead and like my Facebook page if you want to see my uh, work soon after I do it and want to contact me through there and you can check out my DeviantArt page for my better photos. So thank you very much guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.